Hey everybody, it's Deanna Nichols. I'm a doTERRA blue diamond if you don't know that about me and that pretty much means to those of you who don't do doTERRA as a business um, that I create networks of people and I am a person of influence in my company meaning that um, people actually come to me to help them and guide them and mentor them in creating a business and also in building networks. And because of that influential position that I've been given, I am able to help you to learn from some lessons that I've probably learned the hard way. So several years ago when I began to build my network of people, and by the way, people in other careers build networks of people too. If you're the pastor of a church, you're building a network of people. If you're the CEO of an organization, you're building a network of people. We do this naturally and this is how, uh, this is how business works, it's how life works. And so this is an important lesson for all of us. When I began building my network several years ago, I had come from being pretty much a recluse. I lived on my couch or in the hospital most of the time. I didn't see a lot of people. And so my influence was very small at that time. And I did a lot of work in my heart and mind to become the type of person that I feel that God could entrust more influence to. And so he gave me access to tens of thousands of people uh, for whom I am a leader, a mentor, and um been given, I've been given the keys to basically a, a multi-million dollar business that he's entrusted to me. Along the way, as I began to build my network, I failed to heed to a lesson that Jesus actually taught in the New Testament. And um, I know it's something that those of you that are familiar, that have been to Sunday school, that are familiar with the Bible, I know that you have heard this story before and maybe you overlooked it the way I did. And I want to help you learn from some mistakes that I made. The parable of the talents. In the Bible, there was a wealthy man who was going away for years, for a few years, or maybe it was a year, and he wanted to entrust a few um, a few people that he knew, a few friends or um, co-workers or colleagues or whatever. He wanted to entrust them with some of his business assets so that they could invest those while he was gone and take care of them, and, and he could entrust those to them in his absence. And there were three men. And I don't, I don't have the exact details of the story, so forgive me if I'm a little off on my story. But I believe that he gave um, one talent, and you can go back and study what that actually means in today's terms. But he gave one talent to one of the men. He gave five to another and ten to another. And he said, I'll be back um, in a year or so, and I will check to see what you've been able to do with this. And so he basically had worked very, very hard for his money and his business that he had created and um, that he'd been entrusted to. And so he trusted these three, he chose these three people specifically to be safeguards of what he had created and, and what he had put his own blood, sweat and tears into creating and what he would probably sacrificed to create. And he allowed those people, those three men that he selected, he allowed them to be um, basically the stewards of his hard work and sacrifice. When he came back to check on them, he discovered that the first man that he'd given one talent to had buried it. He just buried it. I used to think that that was cool, and I didn't understand why um, that was bad in the story, because um, he, like, he kept it safe, right? He kept it safe, but he put it in the dirt. He didn't do anything with it. He, did, he failed to recognize what he was given. He could have done a ton with that. I mean, it was given to him free. He didn't have to go out and create it. He didn't have to pave the way. He didn't have to have blood, sweat, and tears to make it happen. It was literally given to him. Oh, what a beautiful, amazing opportunity he was given, and he just buried it in a hole. And the master was so disappointed when he returned to find out that he had done nothing with that amazing opportunity that he had been given. The second man, um, I believe he was given five talents, and he had, I think, doubled that. He had gone out and invested it. He had grown it to double what it was, and he was very, the master was very pleased. And then the man that had ten talents had, like, built, it, like, an empire from it. He created a huge, I don't know if it was, like, ten times what it was, and he had really understood the value of what he'd been given, and he had duplicated it. And he had created, um, like this entire huge circle of influence of his own because he recognized and appreciated the opportunity he was given. He knew what went into it. He probably most likely followed some of the example of his master. He had probably watched things that he had done and he had followed his example and even maybe asked for advice from other wise people. He clearly was using the strengths and talents 
See what I did there? <laughs> that he was given to multiply those. And what happened next used to mystify me until now. Um, what he did was he actually, the master took the talent that the, the guy had buried in the ground and he didn't give it to the guy with five because you're thinking like, well, the guy with 10 has a hundred now. Um, if I remember the story right, why did he give it to the guy that had five and had multiplied it to 10? Because he said, you were faithful over a few things and I'm going to make you ruler over many. And so what he, what he realized is that the guy that had multiplied his 10 talents by 10 would do more with that one talent than even the guy that doubled his. He entrusted it with the person he knew would take the most care of it, would recognize the value, would be willing to put in the work and the love and the sacrifice that it would take to make 10 out of that one. I missed that story. I, I missed the lesson from that story as I was building my network. I believed in, I, I chose people and I selected people to work with me too. And, and I did not follow a lot of the lessons that I learned in the book of Proverbs about the type of people to align yourself with necessarily. And sometimes I aligned myself with people that did not have the kind of integrity or did not have um, the character qualities of somebody that you should be partnering with. So when you're choosing partners in life, in business, um, in any area, if you're gonna partner with a person, you need to read the book of Proverbs, like really thoroughly. It, it tells you some specific characteristics to look out for. A wise man looks for these things. It looks for things like um, people that have problems controlling their anger. Um, it talks about people who are gossipers. It talks about people who uh, treat others unfairly, that are unjust. Um, and um, people that are, actually it talks about people who do not respect their marriage vows as those that you should not partner with and even be friends with or even like be near. Um, these are lessons that I didn't understand, but this is talking about any kind of business partnerships, life partnerships, and it's very important to um, sit back and observe the character of folks. Then, if you're going to give something of value that you've created, that have, has cost you, that has been a sacrifice for you, if you're going to give that to somebody, not only should you look at their character, but look and see what they are willing to invest into that. If somebody has never created anything of, their, of, of value of their own, giving them something of value may turn out to be a situation where they're just going to bury it. Um, they could even actually destroy it and harm it and make it less than what it was. And I've certainly observed that over the years that I've created a large network of people is that the people that, um, were the ones that doubled or multiplied by 10 times what they were given, you could have seen, if you had sat back and watched, you could have observed that their character was that of somebody who knew the value, who valued people, who had high character. Um, I have a particular friend who was not necessarily great at creating um, her network, but I entrusted a large portion of my network to her and I have never seen anyone multiply something the way she has. She has put her own blood, sweat, and tears in. She has put love and um, influence and just really taken that investment and made it huge. And I love her so much for that. I admire her so much for that. And so when I have an opportunity to give, I want to give more to her, not to the person who buried theirs in the hole, not to the person who even doubled it, but to the, to the woman who maybe some would look at her and overlook her and not recognize her, but because they were looking at some of the things that we value in our culture, um, instead of looking at character and who she is on the inside. And I absolutely have adored watching her grow and become a leader and take, and she was faithful over a few things and she's become ruler over many in a huge way. And so I hope that you'll think about that lesson as you are, um, entrusting things, maybe even it can even apply to you as a mom or a dad as you're entrusting the education of your child. I mean, what bigger important investment that you created that is meaningful that you have the opportunity to put in someone else's hands, the person who is educating your child, who is care, who's the caregiver for your child. These are all things that you've been entrusted to, you're responsible for, and do you want somebody that has a lot of influence in your child's life to be a person who doesn't have good character, who doesn't, um, who has never invested into the life of a child and that you can actually go and see? If I, if I give this person access to my child's heart and my child's mind, 
what evidence do I have that they're going, that, that my child is going to multiply in their hands? Their character's going to multiply. Their um, intellect's going to multiply. Um, these are all things that we need to consider in any area where we're investing, whether it's business, whether it's in a marriage. Um, all of these are opportunities for us to learn from this lesson. And I know the title of this, I talked about Jesus being a CEO. Jesus taught us so much about building networks, building a business um, through his life. If you watch carefully at the lessons that he's teaching us, they apply to every area of life. There's actually a verse in the Bible that tells us that the Bible gives us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Literally, every piece of information you need to be successful in your life, to be healthy, was given to us by God. It's already there. And so if you want to invest some time in personal development, the person that you can follow is Christ. He has been in all points tempted as we have been, yet without sin. He's had people in his own closest group of people that betrayed him. He had 12 close advisors, 12 leaders in his network, and even one of those even betrayed his life for 30 pieces of silver. And so none of us is above that happening, and we certainly can't predict the future, but we can learn from some of these lessons and we can choose more carefully our alliances, our partnerships, our relationships, if we look at the lessons that those who have gone before us have, have experienced. I hope this has been helpful to you. Hope you can learn from my experience. And just remember, if you've made mistakes, instead of beating yourself up and condemning yourself for that mistake, just realize the person you were at that time is the one who made that those decisions. Now you've grown personally, you have learned lessons and now you can do better. And so ask yourself, instead of saying, why did I do it like that? Just say, why did I do it like that? And see if that introspective um, attitude can help you to learn lessons that can help you to make better decisions moving forward. And um, you'll make fewer mistakes and you'll just get better if you decide to learn and journal and really meditate on some of the reasons behind the decisions that you made, the reasons behind some of the relationships that you chose in the past. And as you grow and become more like Christ and more like the purpose-filled, abundant life that he wants you to have, then you will learn to surround yourself with those types of people. And that's when you will be able to multiply by 10 the strengths, the talents, the gifts, the opportunities that you've been given. Have an amazing day. Shine your light super bright. Don't let anybody cause you to dim your light. You shine your light big and let God do amazing things through your life. Shine on.